A lot of cool stuff in store for today's steak. For one, this wood glows under black light. For two, it grows bean pods that taste sweet, so we're gonna play around with that. And last but not least, unlike with the original US state tree map where it took us a while to get to two bordering states, this time we're diving straight into it with state number three. Up next, it's the great state of Arkansas and the tree we're making it out of is none other than the honey locust, Gladitsia triacanthos. A fast growing medium to large size tree, it reaches heights of 65 to 100 feet tall and has a slightly shorter lifespan for a tree, around 120 years. Its fast growth and ability to thrive in all types of conditions combined with its attractive pinnately compound leaves that turn bright yellow in autumn have made it one of the most popular landscaping trees around, especially after Dutch elm disease wreaked havoc on elm populations throughout the country. So if you live in a city or suburb pretty much anywhere in the country, chances are actually really high that you've got a honey locust tree within walking distance of your home. In the wild though, the honey locust is native to the central eastern United States, spanning outward from the southern Mississippi Valley, where it's most commonly found on moist bottom lands or limestone soils. And in Arkansas, it's most likely to be found in the state's eastern woodlands. Wild honey locust trees differ from the cultivated landscape variety in one very noticeable way. The wild honey locust is usually armed with clusters of enormously terrifying thorns. They branch off with several sharp points appearing red and then turning gray as they mature. So for obvious reasons, a thornless cultivated variety is what you're almost certain to see if you encounter a honey locust outside of its native range or in an urban environment. And fun fact, these thorns are believed to have evolved to protect the tree from browsing Pleistocene megafauna like the woolly mammoth. So what makes this tree so tasty that it felt like it had to throw down nature's spike strips? Well, the honey locust is a member of the Fabaceae family, also known as the legume pea or bean family, because they grow these big old seed pods that are full of beans. And in the honey locust, the pulp in these seed pods is, well, sweet. You might even say sweet like honey. As a result, many animals today feed on these pods, which help with seed dispersal. Also, the ripened pods can be used to make a natural sweetener and have been used for food and traditional medicine by the indigenous people who live within the tree's native range. And seeing how honey locust trees are all over the place and we're in the middle of fall, which is prime pod season, I just had to gather some and try it out. All right, so I've got some honey locust seed pods and we're gonna use these to make a natural sweetener. You see, the honey locust gets its name because its seed pods are quite sweet. But here's the tricky thing. You can't, it's not like you can just munch down on one of these and start eating. The outside does not taste good. It just tastes like hairy nothing. So the flavor lives in the membrane of the pod. It's sticky and unmistakably sweet. As you can gather though, it's not the world's easiest thing to eat. It's not like you'd pluck one of these off a tree and just start nibbling. It's really inconvenient. They're difficult to break apart. So what we're gonna wanna do is de-seed these and then we can process them. Tree bean, tree bean. Well, my name is Tree Bean. Sounds like a, these beans are hard. This is such a silly idea. <laughs> All right, so I brought a giant pot of water to a boil and now we're just gonna dump in a bunch of honey locust pods. The point here is to just soften them up so that it'll be easier to pull the beans out. Already you can smell the sweetness emanating out of this. It's definitely its own unique smell, but it's undeniably a sweet smell. Pretty cool. Just gonna let this sit and soak for at least a few hours, give this plenty of time to soften up. Just pulled this one out of the pot. It's been soaking for a few hours. I'm just gonna try to peel it open along the bottom side. I can, already, I can already tell I'm gonna hate this. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got? Come on. What do you got for us here? There's another one right there. The goopy goop is definitely goopier. Come on now. Okay, there's a seed. All right, so we'll get this on the baking sheet. I'll do as many more of these as I have the patience for, and then we'll get to dehydrating. All right, I had to start filming again because I got one that has less withered beans <laughs> has been a lot easier to work with. This one's peeling right open. The seeds pop right out. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So this one was a breeze. Good to know they're not all as finicky as Mr. Flat Bean. Okay, it's the next day. I let these sit in the oven at its lowest temperature for several hours. Oh yeah. So from what I've read, what we do now is we take a spice grinder. I have an old coffee grinder here that should work quite well. 
and just grind it up. Ooh. Bowl, a bowl. Where's a bowl? Oh, a black walnut bowl. This is what they call cross, cross series synergy. Look at me, I'm being a real content creator. This is where I say something like, go watch the Missouri video if you'd like to see me make this bowl. Um, okay, not that I'm self-conscious or anything, so let's pour all this dust in here. We'll keep at it. Uh, this will help get some of the less desired bits and leave us with, hopefully, some nice tasty stuff, some tasty powder. This is definitely making me real sneezy and runny nose. But hey, we learn through experimentation. This might be a disaster. I've read that it works. I quite possibly ruined this batch. And if I did, what I will tell you all is I am not doing it again. We'll try again in a future video maybe, but this is what we're doing now. Okay, that's probably good enough. So we've got a fine powder in here that hopefully tastes sweet-ish. Let's see if this worked. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, a couple things. <coughs> I read that they can irritate the back of your throat if the pods aren't fully ripe. My throat itches like crazy. Uh, that does not feel great. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Ugh. Okay, um, <laughs> what a disaster. Definitely irritates the back of my throat. It still itches, uh, that is not ideal. I wanna try something. Okay, let's mix some of this in with some water. Could just be that the really fine particles when it's dry just causes some irritation. So let's, let's, uh, let's see if this goes down any better. So that's really interesting. So, okay, okay. That did not immediately assault the back of my throat, but, oh, there it is, no. <laughs> Crap, oh no. What I will say is that first initial taste through this method was kind of interesting. It tasted almost chocolatey. There was some sweetness to it. What I don't know though is how to make it not hurt my throat. Whoops. So this is a failed experiment, but I learned some stuff. Powder method did not work for me, but more honey locust experiments almost certainly in our future, maybe next year. Let's get back to our state. All right, so I learned I still have a lot to learn about using honey locust pods, but the flavor of the pulp was good, and I can see how when done correctly, it'd make for a nice natural sweetener that you could use in all sorts of applications like smoothies, baking, brewing, and more. Now an important thing to note here is that the pods of the black locust tree are toxic. So if you're planning on harvesting and using honey locust pods, make sure you know how to correctly identify the difference between the two trees so you don't make yourself sick. In addition to the sweetness of its edible pods, there are a host of other traditional indigenous uses for the honey locust tree, including using the thorns for nails, needles, and more. Honey locust wood is dense and shock resistant, and its traditional and modern uses include making everything from bows to fence posts, tool handles, railroad ties. And well, as you can see, it's an attractive species, though it's just not one that grows in large enough quantities for there to be big commercial demand. So its use in making things like furniture remains pretty limited. It's also one of several species of wood that fluoresces under UV light. So stay tuned, we'll get to see that here in a second. For now though, let's just admire the wood as is. I really love this color. It's got some warm orange dare I say, honey-like hues to it. And this piece has some little wormholes in there, which adds some fun character. Also, it looks perfect next to the Black Walnut Missouri. Some great color combos already coming together this early on in the map. We love to see it. All right, let's hit it with some black light and <laughs> look how cool that is. On the official state tree map, there was only one state out of all 50 that fluoresced, but I think this time we'll have at least two, if not more. So that won't be the last we'll see of our friend, the black light. That's three states down and only 47 left to go. So if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe to watch the rest of this map come together and see some of the other fun stuff that we make around here. Also drop a like and or a comment to let me know what state you'd like to see me make next and or what tree I should use.